Hey everybody, welcome back. I think uh, this is going to be a, a good video today. I've decided to do a, a portrait today just to kind of show you how I go about things. This is my setup and I've got the on-screen uh, wall uh, mount. This is where my paper is. I have it bungeed down in places and set up so that it uh, it sits where I want it to sit. And then I have a printout of Abraham Lincoln here, looking uh, pretty serious and noble beside uh, the drawing. And the reason that I've done this, I don't do this real often, but I've learned um, along the way how to do site sizing. And so I thought I would show you a little bit on, on how to do that. It's very simple. You just simply take and bring lines over onto your paper in exactly the same place that are on the photograph. Now, I, this is a technique that I learned to do when I was doing a lot of life drawing. And there was an atelier in Minneapolis that I attended for, for a little while, just took some classes. I, I wasn't a student uh, per se, but uh, so this is something that we did quite often and so you're simply just taking a horizontal line and bringing it across and getting all your major points so that they're in exactly the place that they should be. And so now I'm taking a measurement from the side and placing it where it should be. That's my center line there. <laughs> I know that it looks like, like it with this vertical line I'm putting down, but I, I'm not drunk. I only draw like I am. Not real exact. This is, this is mostly done with vine charcoal, and um, I'm drawing very lightly, so everything uh, can be adjusted. You can't put stuff like this down and figure you're going to get it right exactly on the first try. So, you know, take your time. Know that you're going to make adjustments. Uh, my mantra, everybody repeat after me, is you can't get it right until you get it wrong. So <laughs> we're definitely going to live that one today. Now, if I was doing true sight sizing, I would simply measure the width of his head and take it over and put it down uh, on my paper. But I am trying to uh, keep my eye kind of um, trained and, and sharp. So some of this I'm going to do by taking measurements and putting them down where I think they're supposed to go. This just, you know, it, it helps. It's an exercise to, to get your eye sharper. And I, I really recommend doing this if you, uh, if you feel like you don't necessarily need to take measurements on everything. Now I won't be using it in this video but I will show you in a future video the use of uh, proportion dividers. They're a really wonderful tool that I use if I'm doing, let's say, uh, a quick draw and I have a model sitting for me. I will, uh, I'll have my proportion dividers with me and it, it, it allows me to take measurements of a certain size and transfer it to my drawing at the size that I want, so it will proportionally increase the size of, of the measurements. But that's for another video for another day. I don't want to overwhelm you with too many techniques. I'm starting out doing sight size so that I get all the, the vertical reference points uh, on his face in the right place. But I'm also going to be taking and doing measurements and eyeballing things. Um, and for me, it's really an, an exercise in order to try and keep my eye sharp, or I probably should say to get my eye sharp, because uh, you're always working to get it sharper than what it is. Uh, you're never 100% there, I don't think. At least I'm never 100% there. I, I've worked with guys who, you know, this stuff comes real easy to them, and they're, they're, they're eyes and their hand coordination are like computers and they can just get it right out of the box. I, I really admire that. But for, for me, for the rest of us, 
um, we uh, do what we have to do in order to get it uh, to get it right. And so now I'm just looking at where his uh, his eye sockets are, trying to find a general proportion and size that goes in there. Um, you need to constantly be checking against what you have down, and if it's what you have down isn't right, you've drawn light enough that you can definitely go in and, and make your corrections. Now this part, it, it really can seem like it drags on, but I, I promise you, if you take your time at on this stage right now, because everything hinges on you getting this right, if you take your time and get this right, the rest of the drawing is going to be so much more fun. Uh, there's going to be adjustments along the way. You, you just know that that's part of it. And uh, then that will keep you from stressing out too much. After all, I mean, this is supposed to be fun, right? So here I am checking the height of the eye socket that looked pretty, uh, pretty close to me. And now just starting to put in the first indications of the mouth. Uh, for me, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, the mouths are always the hardest thing to get right. Uh, generally, it isn't the eyes, and uh, noses are, are difficult too. But for me, getting the exact uh, distance on the mouth and the, uh, the slight, slight angles on it, it's, uh, it requires a lot of finesse. And so, you know, just take your time. I check the angles. Uh, you'll you'll notice that I put my pencil up, and we'll do an angle and bring it over onto the uh, onto the drawing. That's just simply checking to make sure that the angles uh, of uh, of the photograph and the drawing are the same. <laughs> I really wish I didn't have to speed this up, but it's really not that fast. It's uh, at about eight times speed, 800%. And um, it still allows you to see everything that I'm doing, but um, takes quite a bit of time off of it as far as uh, you having to sit and, and watch this whole thing. But the process is exactly the same. There's a lot of measuring. And before I do any shading, I, I try and make sure that everything is as close to where it needs to be as I can possibly get it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to change things uh, as we're going along. Of course I will. But, um, you know, the, the closer you can get now, the happier of a camper artist you're going to be uh, down the road. It's really going to save you a lot of time. Now, I start out um, doing this drawing, and I have his eyes way too open. And um, it's something that I don't discover for a little while on. And that goes directly to the fact that I wasn't taking direct measurements off of the drawing on the right-hand side. Uh, I was simply taking uh, measurements and then with my pencil and then bringing them over. And so you're not quite as accurate uh, as you would be. Um, but, you know, like I said, for me, this really is all about trying to get your eye more sophisticated and picking up angles and the longer you do it and, and distances between things, the longer you do that, the more you're going to become sensitive to it and it's going to become easier for you. I promise you. But when you first start out, everything is going to be, you know, it's going to be difficult to judge things, but before long, you know, your intuition is going to tell you there's not enough distance between, let's say, the edge of the eye and the side of the head. And so when you see that, don't just say, well, that's close enough, you know, if you're doing a portrait. Obviously, if you're just doing a sketch, that, that's fine. But if you're trying to do a portrait and something seems off, stop yourself and take a look. I mean, take a good hard look at it. And uh, sometimes it helps looking in the mirror. Often uh, times it looks helps looking in the mirror, and um, you only have a, a minute or two when you're looking in the mirror in order to be able to uh, judge what's wrong. But it should be apparent to you right away.
but just remember you're looking in a mirror so the the eye on the right hand side in the mirror is actually the eye on the left hand side so there you go that's worth the cost of admission right there <laughs> Gah! It's the dreaded big wipe. Oh no. <laughs> this is this is the part that everybody uh, gets so freaked out about. But uh, it's one of those things you you have to do. At least I have to do if I'm working uh, on a charcoal piece. I take uh, what I've done and I kind of wipe it down. And uh, then I go back in and add the lines in that I back in that I need using the ghost images that were uh, underneath that I had originally drawn. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now I'm just blocking things in. Light shade, or light side, shadow side. Try and keep the two uh, as separate as we can for a while. And then we'll, we'll blend the two, you know, the light side and the shadow side. This really is just an exercise. The whole drawing is an exercise in getting those values correct. Because if you make the, let's say, the shadows on his nose too dark, then they're going to stand out and it's going to throw the likeness off. So really it's, it's bringing everything up together and making it look like uh, the person who's there. Now eventually I'm going to notice that these eyes are open maybe a little bit too much. Um, but uh, one of the things that I noticed while drawing Lincoln was that his eyes are a little off from each other. One's a little lower than the other. But um, so now what I'm doing is taking a wide piece of uh, willow, I think, believe it's willow charcoal, and um, just giving myself a, a general tone. I can, I'll go back in and put the darker darks and the lighter lights in. But for now, I'm just trying to get those large shapes and cement them in so that uh, so that it works the way it should. Sometimes I'll smudge it with my fingers. Sometimes I'll, I'll use a, a little bit of a brush. Sometimes I'll use a, a tissue paper, you know, a, a tissue. And um, they all have a little bit of a different, see there's a tissue there. They all have a little bit of a different effect. You know, the tissue is, is good for doing larger swatches or swaths. And uh, I like to use the brush in order to get um, little swashes, little, uh, little s flourishes. And then, of course, you go in with your kneaded eraser and you bring those highlights back. Hey, what do you say while we're watching this? We do a little bit of Lincoln trivia. I mean, he's one of the most beloved American presidents ever, probably in the, certainly in the top three, if not number one. So let's see here, what's interesting? Oh, how about this? Lincoln was enshrined in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Did you know that? He wasn't quite WWE material, but thanks to his long limbs, he was an accomplished wrestler as a young man. He was defeated only once in about 300 matches Lincoln reportedly talked a little smack in the ring. Honest Abe once challenged an entire crowd of onlookers after dispatching an opponent. I'm the big buck of this lick. If any of you want to try it, come on and wet your horns. Well, there were no takers. Lincoln's grappling exploits earned him an outstanding American honor in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. When I'm working on a portrait like this, uh, usually what I'm going to do is try and get the eyes nailed down first. For me, a lot of the likeness and a lot of the life from a portrait comes from the eyes. I find them the most satisfying thing to do. If you get the eyes right, you can bring so much life to a portrait. I probably struggle more with the nose and with the mouth generally. The eyes uh, are easier for me to do. Maybe that's why I, I like doing them more. But if I get the eyes right, uh, I can usually uh, have myself work through the, the nose and the mouth uh, to get it right because I've got the, the eyes to kind of inspire me to keep going. 
So as far as the body characteristics go of Abraham Lincoln, it's said that his skin was on the darker side of white, which you probably can't tell in a lot of the pictures since the pictures of the era were black and white. Uh, his hands and his feet were quite big as well, which is frequently the case with really tall people. His head was bigger than the average person's head, and uh, he walked uh, with his shoulders stooped. Some people commented that he was an unusual looking person. He had a distinctively shaped beard with no mustache, which was pretty typical in the day. And, you know, there's the famous mole that he has on the left side there. And uh, often he wore a bow tie. And as far as his facial features go, uh, his face was extremely defined. He had heavy eyebrows, a defined nose, high cheekbones, and thick lips. He had one of the most recognizable faces of all U.S. presidents. Early on in his life, Abraham Lincoln started to develop these wrinkles on his face, perhaps making him appear a little older than he actually was. And some have described his appearance of his skin as leathery, due both to wrinkles and dryness. My intention at this point in the, in the drawing was to kind of do an illustration, um, leave some of the, some of the characteristic marks, and um, have it be a little more stylized. And as I'm working it, more and more I'm wanting to maybe do more of a, of a highly detailed rendering rather than a stylized illustration. And that's great with, um, with this kind of medium because you can keep making changes until you feel like you, you're done. You know, I, you're going to notice along the way here that I'm leaving some of the marks in his beard there. And I had done some smudging up on the upper left hand part of uh, his head and, and his hairline. And as I, as I did it and looked at it and stepped back, it kind of made me feel a little uneasy because he was shot in the head and smearing part of his forehead and his and his hair made me think that maybe I was going to be calling too much or referencing too much even just subconsciously something like that and so as I went along I decided no I'm gonna make this a straight rendering uh, from the from the reference rather than trying to, uh, to make it more of a stylized piece. So as I go along, I'll just continue tightening things up, adjusting uh, the drawing, and uh, trying to bring everything into balance. And this is just a piece of vine charcoal that I'm using here because I'm planning on, uh, on doing my spritz. <laughs> if you've watched any of my other drawing videos, uh, here's my uh, here's my acetone spritz that I have to use every time. It just uh, even if I cover it up, I know it's under there. And so uh, my intention is to leave it at go at the time. I'm still into the area where I'm thinking that this is going to be more of a stylized uh, drawing. But before too long, I'll realize that it isn't, and to go ahead and cover most of that up, if not all of it. But uh, at the time I put it down, I thought that it was going to be showing through. What's that? You're looking for another uh, interesting fact? Well, how about this one? According to the Library of Congress, he hated being called Abe. Honest. Somewhere along the way, I think it was right about here, I made the decision to go ahead and make this uh, more of a tight rendering and try and give it the characteristics that uh, you see more in the photograph rather than to make it that stylized look. So that means uh, it will take me more time, but that's okay. We're not in any hurry. We'll get her done. And the most important thing is that by the end of the day, or at the end of the drawing, you have something that's as good as you can possibly do and that you're happy with. 
this drawing, after all, is not one that I'm going to be selling. It's probably going to end up in the studio somewhere. I don't know if it's going to stay in the drawing pad or if I'll have it framed and put up or, or give it as a gift. But, um, you know, I'm a big fan of his anyways. <laughs> so I guess you could say that this is fan art. So one of Lincoln's most distinguishing features, we all know, is his beard without the mustache. And that was kind of the, the fashion at the time. Uh, there was an 11-year-old girl you've probably heard that wrote to Lincoln an unsolicited letter telling him that uh, he should let his whiskers grow during his presidential run because uh, his face was too thin. And he took her advice. He actually met her uh, during uh, a stop in her hometown. And after he took her advice and became elected president, he was the first president with a beard. Yeah. Now that I decided to go ahead and, and make this more of a, of a rendering rather than a stylized paint or drawing, I am putting in details and adjusting my values, making sure that everything sits exactly as it should. Uh, a lot of this I won't be able to show you because it takes a while to do, and um, all you'd be watching is my hand kind of jumping around. Uh, making adjustments here and there, but uh, I will show you the progress of it as it goes and uh, If there's anything that kind of jumps out at me uh, I will definitely make sure to call that out But at this point, it's really just putting things down looking at the reference standing back making sure visually that everything has the right space and the right tone that it needs and if I need to make those adjustments, I do it sooner rather than later. And, of course, I'll be adding in a lot of his wrinkles and, and things like that. Here you can see where in his uh, forehead and his hairline on the upper left, I've gone ahead and filled that in and continued doing the rendering part of this. Uh, there's an awful lot of erasing that goes on. I've taken my charcoal pencil and once I've erased I go in and add dimension by adding kind of a shadow side to those wrinkles and it really gives them a very 3D look and uh, all the time softening with my finger in order to make it all sit and have the same texture that it that it has uh, throughout the drawing. So this is the first thing that you see when you look at the drawing but this is really the last things that go in are these details. And um, let me show you this charcoal pounce sock that, that I use. Uh, it's just made out of a black sock and uh, I pour a bunch of uh, charcoal dust into it. And as you pounce it or bounce it on your drawing, a little of it um, slowly comes out of the sock. And it's a really nice way to get some very subtle gradations it's not anything you have to buy. I know that, you know, some places sell them. Get, get yourself a sock and some charcoal dust. And this is my uh, Sakura electric eraser. It's wonderful because it allows you to do very small highlighting, such as hair or wrinkles. So I'll go ahead and speed it up a little bit, and you can see that I will uh, erase some of this stuff out. And then I'll go back in with my fingertip uh, or a brush and uh, soften it so uh, it, it doesn't stand out quite so strongly. So as I'm finishing up, you'll see I've put most of the details around his eyes where his wrinkles are. And that's the way the uh, photograph was, but that's where I want people to look anyways. So that's about it for this one. There is the finished drawing. Here's a bit of a close-up of it so that you can see what it looked like uh, once all the marks were, were softened a bit. And uh, as always, if you have any questions and or if I didn't cover something or you were confused, leave a, a question or comment down in the, down in the comment section. And uh, that's it for this time. I do appreciate you subscribing and, and watching and commenting and sharing. If you haven't subscribed, and you like this kind of content, I do uh, tutorials on 
drawing and painting uh, and post them uh, just about every week, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you know when I upload something new. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you down the road.